Hi friends, uh, good morning, good evening, good day. Uh, by the way, it's a beautiful morning here uh, in Spokane, Washington. And firstly, thanks for joining us and welcome to today's presentation, webinar, workshop on creativity for designers and non-designers. We're going to discuss uh, the art, uh, science, mechanics, uh, design, paradox of creativity. And uh, also we use the term designer very loosely here. Uh, designer, creator, developer, innovator, anyone who designs or creates uh, or devises uh, preferred situations over existing situations. And uh, the world has uh, made uh, designers of all of us, right? Uh, every day we encounter so many things and we don't know how to navigate. So believe it or not, you're all designers. And the speaker is very excited to share this knowledge with you. Before we begin, uh, this is the first time we're doing this in an online uh, video format. We've shared this material a few times in a live setting, uh, in a college or a university with students, professionals, and really sincere seekers. Uh, and this is not going uh, to be like a usual lecture or uh, or a sermon, which uh, one might be familiar with. This is, this is a kind of an interaction uh, dialogue. Uh, it needs a participation an investigation, right? Uh, so this will be more in the nature of a dialogue or a conversation, not judging or attacking, but uh, investigating and discussing. Uh, so be open and uh, let's get started. Who are we? Just Creative Company is a mindful, independent, creative collective, and we work with founders, leaders, organizations uh, who share our belief in the power of creativity and innovation. People who are working to make a positive impact in the world, and also, we do a lot of cool stuff. Unfortunately, uh, we can't share them outside, but stick around if you want to see what we're capable of doing and what we've done in the past. Let's look at creativity. What, when, who, why, how. When we speak about creativity or creative people, these are a few of the words uh, which come up quite often during our discussions. Uh, things about art, music, dance, uh, intelligence, technology, poetry, humor. And uh, for many of us, it's always the other person who is creative, the kids, um, the spouses, uh, the geniuses, the Michelangelo's, uh, Picasso's, uh, Mozart, and the Disney's of the world. But honestly, creativity is at the heart of everything we do in our day-to-day uh, -day lives, in our everyday lives, uh, in our businesses, and also the businesses which have focused on creativity, design, innovation have done way better than the normal uh, S&P $500 companies in the past two decades, right? Look at those indices, uh, whichever you follow. Um, so innovation, design, and uh, creativity can help us solve uh, so many of, uh, of our challenges, right? Right now, it really matters more than ever on how we can bring uh, novelty, freshness, uh, newness, uh, certain kindness, creativity to everything we do, every moment, and uh, not becoming automatic and mechanical like the computers. And also one needs uh, tremendous intelligence today more than ever. The computers are uh, becoming smarter and intelligent. And unfortunately, we as we as human beings, we are, um, we are kind of regressing. We have not kept up, um, not uh, mastered uh, this art of creativity, right? Uh, we are becoming more like the machines and the computers. They're already controlling us, right? Uh, with, the, with the social networks, the endless notifications, the media, they're all controlling and manipulating us, uh, whether we know it or not. So how do we get around this? Is there a way out? Uh, stick around if you want to know the answer. Creativity could well be the answer for all this. The speaker is originally from South India. Uh, he studied art and design in Bangalore. Uh, he's been working in creative roles for the past uh, 20 years or so and has spent most of his adult life in India, Europe, and America. The speaker has held uh, many professional titles and uh, non-professional titles, as you can see. But fortunately, it didn't matter uh, much to the speaker because he discovered the joy and uh, gift of true creativity at a very early age uh, from his parents and teachers. 
honestly, uh, he's a nobody uh, and it shouldn't matter. He says creativity has nothing to do with any of these labels, any of these, uh, any of these people, or how we understand creativity uh, generally uh, in our culture. If you're still interested and in hanging around, uh, the speaker would love to share this flame and joy of uh, creativity with you. Before we proceed, uh, what are the conditions to learn uh, creativity? It's quite simple, really. Uh, be open, uh, suspend disbelief, at least for the next uh, few minutes, and be willing to learn. Right? How does anyone learn any uh, new skill or learn anything? Or can someone learn creativity? Right, uh, That's the investigation. Uh, back in India, we have a story of an old wise man who said, uh, in order to discover um, truth, uh, one must anal analyze it uh, the way a goldsmith uh, would uh, analyze and examine gold uh, by uh, by cutting, by rubbing, scraping, and melting. Similarly, uh, by the way, you uh, you don't have to agree or disagree with uh, what is being said. Uh, isn't that cool? Uh, all you need to do is uh, pay attention, uh, be open, uh, listen, and observe with a spirit of uh, curiosity. Uh, with the spirit of inquiry and perhaps you may discover what the speaker and many other artists and creative people have discovered in their journeys as we said uh, this is going to be this is going to need a different kind of communication a different kind of learning uh, an artistic or an artistic uh, way of uh, looking and seeing the world and yourself and uh, once once uh, one gets it uh, it's quite uh, incredible really it's quite profound one morning the dad went uh, knocking on his son's room he said son wake up wake up it's morning you're late for school uh, but the son didn't want to wake up he's like dad i don't want to wake up one i hate school two the students uh, tease me and three, the school is so dull and boring, I don't want to go to school. Uh, for which the dad replies, son, first, it's your duty to attend school. Second, you're 45 years old. And finally, you're the school principal. So wake up, right? <laughs> uh, if you're bored, uh, overworked, overwhelmed, uh, lonely and dull, wake up, right? Uh, wake up, become aware, alert, and become creative. Uh, so if you're bored with our... Uh, schools, offices, our jobs, our routines, uh, I would say wake up, right? Uh, was it Socrates who said uh, that the unaware life is not worth living? So wake up, uh, get unstuck, uh, become aware, be alert, have fun. <laughs> Let's look at uh, the basic form of communication, right? Uh, words. I don't know if we realize uh, that uh, whenever we name something, or somebody, uh, or an event, or a person, or even ourselves, uh, we stick uh, fixed fixed labels uh, to things, and we stop looking. For example, uh, if I say I'm a capitalist, and uh, say you're a you're a Marxist, then you might disagree, right? You might stop listening to what I have to say. Uh, so one has to have a spirit of uh, investigation, right? Let's say this word, uh, Niagara Falls, I picked it up for no specific reason, uh, but it could uh, well be the Grand Canyon or the Taj Mahal or uh, the great temples, churches, and cathedrals of the world. Uh, it could be any noun, pronoun, adjective, really. Um, so whenever we hear the word or see the word uh, Niagara Falls, is it anything like the Niagara Falls? Say, the, say when we hear the word or see the word uh, Niagara Falls, is it anything like uh, the real Niagara Falls? It's an experience. Uh, it's a moment-to-moment -moment thing. Uh, the milky mist, uh, the wet crispiness, the chillness um, is nothing like the word Niagara Falls. The description is not the described, or the word is not the thing. The menu is not the food. I think that's uh, fairly simple to understand. Take a look at these two balls, uh, a soccer ball and a golf ball. I mean, uh, really look at it. Uh, the question is, uh, which one is bigger? Uh, what, are, what are your answers? Uh, is it, 
of course, uh, the soccer ball is uh, big. Um, the golf ball looks tiny in comparison with the soccer ball. But um, if you had to look at it in real space, um, uh, the golf ball would be really big, right? Uh, so the reason why the golf ball looks small because it's in a distance and uh, once you uh, once an object moves in distance, it becomes smaller. So a lot of our uh, perceptions are uh, the way we perceive uh, dimension. It's all in our brains, and uh, and for day-to-day uh, -day perception, it uh, serves really well. Uh, we construct uh, the realities in our head, and uh, once we understand it, uh, we can uh, we can uh, re-examine it uh, with a newer perspective. Please take a look at this slide. Uh, I'm not going to explain what this is, uh, but uh, you probably read it already. Uh, if you haven't read it, uh, please take a closer look and uh, we'll visit this slide uh, in a bit. <laughs> what do you see? See the reflections, uh, the water, or the dance, or the dancer. Or is the dancer different from the dance? Do you also hear the sound? Let me play this again. Let's see if we can pick this famous song. I mean, <laughs> I know it's really tricky, but uh, yeah, if you haven't, if you're not able to guess it, it's fine. But uh, once you listen to it, uh, there's no way to understand. You want to test it out for yourself? Uh, let me show. You. We hear a word and immediately recognize it, or we see something and we match it with our memories. Our brains are always uh, matchmaking, right? Uh, it's a matchmaking mechanism. Say you see an Eiffel Tower and, and you immediately have memories of the Eiffel Tower. Or, uh, and once, you, once your brain understands something, once you know it, you cannot not uh, know it, right? It's that simple. So if we already jump to conclusions, uh, we can't actually examine it or investigate it. So it's very important uh, to learn uh, the art of learning, which uh, involves uh, firstly the art of observation. Right? Uh, we'll be closely looking at the art of uh, observing. Normally we observe, but uh, nobody teaches us how to observe. Right? Nobody yeah, teaches us how to observe like an artist or how to listen like a musician or a singer. Normally we don't observe or listen. Uh, I remember this funny story. Uh, a man woke up one morning. He was surprised to see a new photograph on the wall of his bedroom. So he went straight to the kitchen and held at his wife, like, why did you hang the photograph of your old uh, dreadful looking uncle in our room, right? Uh, for which the wife replied, uh, go take a closer look, gentlemen. Uh, it's not a photograph, it's a new mirror. <laughs> uh, this guy, uh, this guy didn't even notice his own face. So that's how we are. Uh, we don't observe at all. Um, there was this young boy who went uh, to the church uh, looking for his father and the father was busy reading his newspaper and um, didn't want to be disturbed but uh, curious kids you know um, the student went ahead and uh, asked father uh, what causes arthritis uh, for which the father replied smoking causes arthritis uh, drinking causes arthritis uh, roaming uh, roaming around with loose women causes arthritis why do you ask uh, it says um, it says in the paper that the Holy Father has arthritis, right? Uh, so this father wasn't listening. Uh, you see, uh, we're always listening. Uh, we're always observing with uh, fixed concepts and uh, fixed judgments uh, that we don't uh, look at anything uh, really. Uh, we don't do anything without uh, sticking labels or judgments. So sometimes uh, these are useful, but uh, not always. Now let's get into the meat of today's uh, presentation. In the art of learning, uh, we should also discuss the human brain. Uh, the human brain is quite phenomenal, really. Uh, not uh, my brain or your brain, but uh, the brain of the human species, uh, it has a lot of potential right uh, and of course this is the tool which we use uh, for learning uh, which is basically connected to our senses our eyes ears nose um, the way we experience the world um, 
So the human brain uh, has a lot of potential. Uh, the other day I was listening to uh, this American theoretical physicist um, Michio Kaku about his uh, vision of the future. He says uh, we'll be able to um, transmit emotions and feelings through the internet like we transport sound and light. He forces a vision of human beings becoming like Greek gods. Uh, he says we'll master energy, technology and space. So, uh, we've already began space exploration. Uh, our guy, uh, Elon Musk, uh, he wants to send people to Mars. And uh, and also we can uh, divide uh, the atomic particles into subatomic particles and the whole of quantum physics, um, mechanics and computing. Probably you, already, you heard about it. Uh, and also the strides we are making in technology, the artificial reality, virtual reality, mixed reality, those are going to be tremendous. Uh, it'll pro it'll uh, very soon revolutionize the way we work and live. Um, and also the speaker had an opportunity to work on these amazing technologies. Uh, he's quite fascinated with them, really. So with all this, uh, can we really control the brain? Uh, that's the question. Uh, probably not. Uh, many of us haven't figured out how to uh, how to silence the brain or how to make uh, peace with the brain. So that's um, that's why it's a very significant question, right? What's the point if you can go to Mars or fly in supersonic jets and travel in limousines or live in expensive mansions and uh, and all the uh, wealth if our uh, mind and hearts are in misery, right? Uh, what's the point? Uh, that's why um, it, it becomes a very significant question on this uh, this creativity. Okay, let's take a moment to breathe uh, before we proceed. So there are two kinds of creativity. One is uh, the problem solving uh, creativity and the other one is uh, uh, illumination or insight. Uh, one is like a, one is like ant-like creativity, right? Uh, where we move uh, step by step. Uh, the other one is uh, like a sweeping stroke. Uh, the other one requires a lot of mastery. Uh, so uh, yeah, we are trying to conduct uh, online workshops and seminars on uh, the other kind of creativity. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But uh, for today's discussion, we are uh, concerned with this other kind of creativity, which is more about problem solving uh, than about uh, decorating or uh, um, artistic creativity. So uh, yeah, before we begin, uh, uh, I have a quiz for you. Uh, can you read what is there on the screen? Uh, I know it's uh, <laughs> it's quite fun, uh, but uh, let's try this. Okay. Yeah, there are a few logos there. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of clutter. I don't know if you see. Uh, it's basically uh, there's a lot of clutter. And... Uh, I don't know if you heard uh, about this uh, statistics, like on an average, uh, people um, get uh, bombarded with uh, more than 200 or 2,000 messages on an average day, right? It could uh, start from your uh, toothpaste to your soap to your brush and the advertising which you see on the internet and TV and so on. So there's a lot of clutter and uh, it... Um, it and, and uh, it's going to be really difficult in the future uh, to market or to design for people because uh, in every landscape, in every domain, there's a lot of clutter and, uh, and uh, one doesn't know how to deal with this, right? Uh, so uh, for today, how about uh, we start with a blank canvas, right? Uh, of course, for designers and artists, uh, <laughs> the blank canvas can be quite scary. Um, Let's start with this uh, tiny dot. Let's see uh, where this goes, right? So we start with a dot. Uh, <coughs> um, so we have a line. And we have an alphabet. Uh, so uh, what is this alphabet? Uh, I mean, if you look at it, uh, it could either be a H or a 
a let's see oh it's a the how cool well cat how come the how come the image in the center is the same but our meanings have changed right uh, so um, basically it's an illusion if you if you look closely i mean um, depending on what the surrounding is uh, we uh, we give meaning to what we see right uh, and that's uh, quite interesting based on surroundings uh, we give meanings uh, to whatever we see uh, this is uh, this again uh, one other uh, illusion um, so look at the line on the top and look at the line below can you tell me which one is uh, lengthier of course for many uh, the line on the top looks uh, taller because uh, or lengthier because uh, because of the illusion of perspective right uh, so our, uh, our eyes um, sometimes uh, we can't trust our eyes uh, look at this sentence right uh, even though uh, the entire uh, sentence is misspelled uh, we can make out the meaning uh, very easily if you if we uh, <laughs> if we try uh, and read uh, it's amazing how we can uh, interpret uh, even though uh, all the letters are out of place. So here's one other example of random shapes and uh, arrows. Uh, does anybody, can anybody guess what this is? What happened? So uh, do you see a triangle in the middle? I mean, that triangle is, is illusory, right? There's no such triangle. Uh, it just appeared, it just popped uh, in front of the screen. And um, and the whole of Gestalt psychology is based on um, how we create meanings in our minds, right? We have, there are so many Gestalt principles, like principles of proximity, of uh, figure and ground, of closure. This one is uh, the principle of closure where uh, uh, we see enclosed uh, shapes. Let's try this example. What do you see? The letter seven. Oh, we have triple seven. Now we have a Penrose triangle. Um, what is cool about the Penrose Triangle? It's, it's a paradox, right? Uh, even though, uh, yeah, it looks like a three-dimensional object, uh, it's a two-dimensional thing. And, uh, once, uh, once it looks like a three-dimensional object, you can create uh, the worlds, right, uh, within those three-dimensional objects. And that can be fun, right? As designers, as artists, how can you move from two-dimension to three-dimension and uh, create meaning? Uh, uh, th that's a lot of fun in any creative endeavor. Uh, so we keep hearing about this uh, thinking outside the box. And of course, um, there are a lot of uh, ideas about how to think outside the box. But uh, for most of us, uh, since we live inside the box, uh, we can't read uh, what, they do, what the instructions are there because the instructions are usually outside the box. And uh, a lot of us are... Uh, living within, uh, within the box. Um, so one needs a lot of creativity. So let's see what uh, what we have here, right? Um, oh, we have the letter I, or you could uh, see the letter one, whatever it is, right? Let's see where this goes. Um, so now we have I, uh, or EI, uh, which means artificial intelligence, and I in uh, Korean or Japanese, it also means love. And also uh, in Indian languages, I means uh, like Eureka, it's like exc exclamation. So we have we associate meanings with uh, letters and images and symbols. Um, and once you know the meanings and once you understand it, you can, you can really uh, play with it, right? Uh, 
Well, let's see. Here's one example which uh, the speaker made up. So here's an ad for uh, for uh, for a gym, right? You have the before and after. Of course, the before is uh, um, This is a famous uh, graffiti from Banksy. Uh, look at the way he breaks the illusion of uh, space, um, and that's something which uh, which is remarkable, especially uh, when you look at Banksy's graffiti or. Uh, anybody's graffiti, right? How they handle space and how they break the space and create meaning. Uh, it's quite remarkable uh, when you see creative people play with their tools. Let's look at this example. Uh, any guesses what this is? No? Okay, let's try one other example. Maybe some of you are there. Uh, let's see. That's the iconic uh, Coca-Cola bottle. See, it's the same bottle, but um, look at how designers use um, uh, create meaning with a single bottle, right? Isn't that fascinating? How we can, how we can create meaning with images and shapes. So uh, it's quite, uh, it's quite, more, <laughs> it's quite remarkable to be an artist uh, to understand this and to use it in your work and uh, to create meaning and to uh, to delight people. I think that's very important uh, for any for any creative person. Ever wonder what the world famous Apple logo would look without the bite. Uh, so that's how it looks. Uh, it looks like a cherry, doesn't look like an apple, right? And um, the bite actually, uh, if, you, uh, if you ask any designer, uh, they would tell uh, the bite has a meaning in the logo, right? Without the bite, uh, uh, it would look like a cherry, right? The bite gives a scale, it gives a certain uniqueness to the logo, uh, which makes it really simple. And Apple is really good at it, and also it has a huge fan following. So there are all these uh, fan-made Apple logos. Uh, this one is, of course, uh, dedicated to Steve Jobs. So Apple uh, recently launched their, launched their online India store. This is one of their uh, new logos, right? It's uh, influenced by uh, the Indian floral uh, patterns and mural art. It's actually quite uh, beautiful. And if you look closely, uh, the um, the motives are made of uh, Apple icons. For example, you see these ear pods. Uh, you see the application icon. Uh, you see um, your maps, the um, photos uh, icon, the genius, uh, the app store, the voice memos. Uh, so as you look. Uh, deeper, there's, uh, there's all this new meaning associated with the image, and uh, that is uh, very intriguing. And uh, artists and designers can use uh, such things in, uh, when they're creating imagery, right? So you have the text and you have the subtext. Uh, you, have, uh, you have the obvious meaning and you have inert meaning. Uh, you have the story and you have the song. So if you think like that, uh, you can be really creative. Uh, when you come up with the imagery. Here's a plate and a fork. Get more than what you're looking for. This could well be an ad for a pub or a restaurant uh, or a party or anything, right? Uh, look at those uh, people uh, cheering or uh, playing music or karaoke whatever that is. So many times uh, uh, we can create meaning by looking things differently, right? Uh, for example, you have the me and uh, 
the more we think of ourselves and our own ideas, uh, the more limited we become, right? Uh, one, one fact which uh, artists and designers need to realize is uh, our perception of the world is just one of the perception of uh, the possible perceptions one can have. So uh, many times uh, uh, we need to have that empathy towards the others. Uh, that's what uh, design is all about, right? To have empathy, to have, uh, uh, to connect, uh, to feel uh, like the users, like our customers, like our clients. And, uh, that's very important. So uh, when you use uh, the line, uh, the line is a very strange thing. Uh, in nature, uh, I, you don't see straight lines, uh, not a lot of them. Uh, but uh, yeah, we are, but as designers, we use lines in many ways. Uh, it's always fascinating. We could create landscapes, we could create uh, cartoons, we could create uh, a lot of things. Uh, so here's a cartoon uh, which the speaker made, uh, <laughs> made it a while ago. Uh, so uh, this uh, this illustrates uh, how people are actually uh, uh, running behind carrots uh, all their lives. Uh, they're running behind wealth or money or fame. Uh, uh, these days, uh, <laughs> the, all they are interested are the mobile phones. So, so they don't even have time uh, to for anything else. And uh, the speaker feels it's a very pathetic way of uh, living life. Right, uh, like one has so much uh, freedom and uh, knowledge and uh, ideas, and why restrict yourself to uh, to what the society has uh, has made us think? As I said, uh, society has taught us uh, how to think, how to how to draw the line. How to um, how to divide? How to create borders? How to uh, how to define borders? Right. Uh, in many ways, uh, we might be looking at the line incorrectly. Right. As you can, like, if you see in the world, like whenever there's an object in space, there's a border, uh, and that that border is uh, what we call as line, and uh, um, and that line. Um, you can draw. You can draw the contours. You you perhaps would have seen art students uh, uh, sketching in a museum or in a train station or in a park. Uh, so they're uh, usually drawing contours. They're studying the pose. They're studying the um, proportion. They're studying the environment. Um, they uh, yeah. They're trying to observe as clearly as possible, and um, that is a great exercise. If you can sketch, if you can draw, you can look at the world, if you can observe the world, then a lot of, uh, then you discover a lot of things, and uh, that is very interesting. Uh, you you get to see beyond the borders. You once you look at people, um, once you um, once you once you look at inner person of people, uh, their motivations, their drives, uh, their wants, uh, their needs, and. Uh, and in many cases, you might, uh, uh, as I said, you might be interpreting the line uh, incorrectly, right? Uh, and in nature, there is no line. There is in nature, uh, there is uh, no line. There are line segments. Uh, there is uh, point A to point B. There is uh, birth to death. Uh, there is the time, the past, present, and future. But uh, if you really uh, go into it deeply, there is no time. The past and the future exist only in our minds, uh, whereas uh, the only moment that is real is uh, the present moment. And uh, that's why I said uh, we might be looking at the line uh, incorrectly. And uh, even if you trust Euclidean geometry, you know that uh, uh, there is no line uh, in space. Right? There's only, there are only curves, and those curves are uh, uh, part of the infinite Earth. Right? Uh, and uh, that is very interesting. Um, for example, uh, we saw how the line, <laughs> how the line segment which you are looking uh, is now part of a circle. So right now you might be looking at a slice of uh, life or slice of time or slice of an event. Uh, but when you look at the bigger picture, uh, you discover so many things. Um, 
and that is uh, that is beautiful so let's see what we have here so now we have a from a line we move to a circle and from the circle uh, oh wonderful we have the olympic logo <laughs> how beautiful uh, yeah from the circle you have the continents uh, and uh, as i said uh, you discover you discover moment to moment and uh, that is interesting uh, you remember the slide uh, previously let's look at uh, what is actually there right? i know uh, it reads something but let's see what is there see <laughs> it wasn't what you, what you thought it was right and uh, sometimes uh, as i said we could be looking at a slice of things and not interpreting correctly and uh, that is uh, really essential uh, to be an artist to be open to the art possibilities and uh, one can only do that when one, one uh, knows the art of learning the art of uh, observing the art of seeing uh, the art of discovering right it's an art it's not a science i mean you could also look at it as a science uh, i would say with an artistic perspective it is easier and uh, you might uh, make connections and uh, discover uh, the truth was it einstein who said uh, that logic can take you from point a to point b and uh, imagination could take you from eternity to eternity i think there is some truth uh, to that uh, thanks for letting me know i think there was a problem with my headset uh, hopefully this sounds okay <laughs> i think in our discussion on creativity uh, the speaker feels uh, one should also study the human brain right uh, not just uh, physiologically or biologically but uh, study how our uh, uh, programming uh, operates inside inside us uh, the operating system and the applications uh, which run inside our brains and for many of us it's quite difficult to conceive that uh, we are programmed Uh, even biologically we are programmed by nature for uh, food uh, sex and danger and there's um, the social validation which everyone relies on uh, we rely on appreciation and condemnation and uh, there's the physical pain and suffering which is caused by events or actions so, or by people or work and uh, and society uses this to control us right and uh, and also there's the physical pain and suffering which is caused by old age uh, this chronal uh, this uh, once uh, one becomes aware or uh, wakes up to this reality one can uh, learn to read themselves uh, very clearly right uh, normally we learn how to read books or uh, how to consume knowledge uh, but uh, we don't know how to read our own our own brains our own uh, life stories we don't know how to uh, uh, we don't understand that uh, really clearly and designers and creative people or innovators uh, we can use this knowledge uh, to spread uh, goodness and alleviate pain or suffering in this society right and uh, and many of the good uh, brands uh, do that uh, precisely right uh, if you look at um, what the best product brands do and how how they innovate uh, they use emotion uh, to innovate uh, uh, to innovate uh, in a responsible and honest uh, way which is relevant to our time and culture and the society we live in and um, and even if you look at the exam the logos on the screen uh, if you consider uh, some of those uh, current uh, popular uh, brands today they know how to use uh, human emotion in their applications in their uh, interactions with people they know how to empathize with their customers right for example uh, pinterest empathizes with uh, scrapbookers and uh, that's the business they are in uh, google empathizes with uh, people who are searching for information or seeking information similarly uh, netflix uh, they empathize with the uh, with people who want entertainment uh, so um, i think uh, it's it's bec it becomes a uh, very important for people in technology or uh, in design that one understands uh, who they are creating for and how they could use emotion in their work and um, bring out a bring about a positive change um i think uh, we can skip this for today uh, these are some of the projects we've done over the years uh, this is where we showcase our uh, delightful and engaging customer experiences these are few of the projects uh, we've done over the years 
This is where we showcase our uh, delightful and engaging customer experiences. Uh, we'll skip we'll skip it for this audience. Uh, we, see, we swap these slides uh, depending on the industry or domain we speak to. Uh, again, no secret there. This is a concept uh, which the speaker has used in his career uh, to mentor his team on the business emotional uh, value of creativity in organizations, uh, in product research and uh, in product development, right? Uh, uh, in managing products, uh, in entrepreneurship. So when you bring uh, novelty uh, to anything you do, um, so ordinarily we find um, that we are not able to push uh, a product or a service forward in in a meaningful way. And um, sometimes uh, that can be really challenging for designers or developers or entrepreneurs where there is stagnation and uh, there is no scope for, uh, for product growth or adoption uh, and these are very important in especially in SaaS companies where uh, the only differentiation right now is uh, brand because uh, most of the services are being offered by now every company is kind of a software company every company is kind of a media company uh, every company needs uh, innovation so uh, ordinarily we find uh, very difficult to move things forward and especially true in SaaS companies or uh, in application uh, companies where um, there are where there are so many new competitors springing up and uh, how do you how do you differentiate more than uh, the product right how do you differentiate yourself as a brand and how do you bring novelty to uh, to what you do and uh, many times uh, creativity uh, can be that fulcrum right uh, or uh, and designers, uh, when I say designers, I use it uh, loosely. Uh, designers can be those change agents who can uh, show them the way. And that's why creativity uh, is so important in businesses. And also, like, uh, when you bring novelty to anything you do, uh, there is a chemical release of dopamine and uh, serotonin and other uh, happiness-inducing uh, chemicals. And a lot of uh, modern psychological research also validates uh, that claim. People use that research, right? Athletes, uh, people who are in performance sports, um, they use, um, they, they have to rely on creativity, right? For example, um, Sachin Tendulkar, who is regarded as one of the best uh, cricketers in the planet, uh, because uh, he had spent so much uh, time playing the game, of course, he could uh, be creative, right? He didn't have to worry about all the smaller things which uh, which the ordinary cricketers focus on. Uh, similarly, if you look at uh, other great musicians, people who began early in their career, uh, they, they kind of figure out, they get over the uh, learning phase uh, rather early in the life. And after that, it's always an uh, expression of their uh, of their intelligence. So creativity uh, can be that expression of intelligence. Creativity as innovation, uh, that is a famous uh, lemon squeezer from a designer called uh, Philip Stark. Um, so uh, what do you get when you combine a lemon squeezer and a squid? You get that. So that's why I think it's in the um, Museum of Design. So whenever you bring uh, novelty to a product or to a service, uh, there's something new which happens. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with this concept called Maya. Most advanced uh, yet acceptable. I think this juicer fits that description very well. So one needs uh, novelty and creativity else. Uh, we would be repeating the same uh, uh, mistakes or patterns over and over uh, which we committed in the past and um, and living in that habitual mode of uh, thinking and working is, is never sustainable. Uh, one needs to get out of um, that uh, rut of uh, mechanicalness in our lives. If you have any questions, uh, we can take them now. Uh, it's weird that uh, one doesn't hear feedback <laughs> because everyone is on mute. Uh, I see a question. Okay. Yeah, this presentation was designed in PowerPoint. Uh, yeah, it's a true PowerPoint. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad uh, all, all of you want me to continue this presentation. Okay. Creativity as art. 
Uh, this is a famous mural uh, of Michelangelo on the Sistine Chapel in Rome. I'm sure you've uh, seen uh, seen it a zillion times. Uh, Michelangelo was originally a sculptor and on insistence uh, from the Pope and clergy at the time, he was uh, forced to paint these murals. Um, there's also a beautiful movie made. Uh, uh, that's a famous quote. Um, I saw the angel in the marble and carved until I set him free. Right. Um, I don't know if you've seen his uh, Pieta or his uh, sculptures, the David, uh, the contrapostos in his sculptures. Um, it's quite fascinating. Many times uh, one needs to see things uh, beyond the surface in perspective uh, to discover that the angel in the marble. Um, the speaker's father uh, is a very renowned uh, sculptor in India, and uh, the speaker was fortunate to see uh, the master craftsman at work uh, all his life. The precision, the design, uh, the elegance of the poses, um, it's so breathtaking. Uh, you have to really see it. <laughs> uh, maybe someday we can discuss um, subjective and objective art. Uh, here's the man, uh, Van Gogh, right? I'm sure you've probably seen his work uh, or reference in movies. Um, there's this movie, Lust for Life. The speaker had an opportunity to see a few of his originals uh, in Paris and in New York. Um, the Sunflowers, um, the Starry Night. Uh, the sheer expressiveness of these paintings uh, um, which could never be captured in a photograph. Uh, the tactile beauty of these paintings, uh, the pigments, uh, the strokes, the the expressiveness um, of the compositions, uh, it's phenomenal. Uh, these, uh, these compositions come alive uh, when you stand in front of it. Um, and that's a nice quote on uh, visualization and dreaming for any uh, creative problem solving, right? Uh, that uh, how can you dream or how can you visualize uh, things in uh, things? This is a graffiti from Banksy. Um, Banksy is a very famous uh, and popular graffiti artist. Uh, his graffiti is sold on Sotheby's. Uh, um, but uh, what matters is uh, the way he's able to um, express the voice and mood of the generation in a visual form uh, which works in the space uh, they are painted in, uh, like the ones uh, on the Western Wall in Israel or. Uh, uh, some of those graffiti in UK, in Bristol and other places. So is creativity always useful? Not at all, right? <laughs> I mean, creativity is not always useful. It can be quite uh, detrimental. <laughs> Sometimes it can slow you down. That's the reason uh, one should use uh, judgment and be mindful. I think uh, mindfulness uh, precedes uh, creativity. Uh, if you were a creative accountant or a stockbroker or a wolf or a shark uh, CEO and you were creatively cooking the books, that's not creative. <laughs> that's, uh, that's felony. Uh, so, yeah. So one need not be creative all the time, right? Uh, creativity has its function. Uh, and creativity as design, and um, uh, again, a famous quote, a lot of budding designers use uh, that quote to differentiate content, uh, form, and uh, function. Of course, some of them uh, take it uh, seriously. The speaker especially likes uh, Herbert Simon's uh, definition of uh, design. Uh, and of that of a designer, he's regarded as the father of artificial intelligence. Uh, if you understand uh, this quote, uh, probably you'll understand design and designers and uh, their impact on the world. That is Peter Drucker. Uh, he's the management uh, guru. Uh, that is uh, Peter Drucker, the American management guru. Um, that's his quote on uh, discovering opportunities and uh, shaping the future. So he's one of the pioneers on setting the foundation for managing modern business corporations. As, in, as I mentioned before, during the Q&A uh, session, uh, these perspectives are uh, just uh, their perspectives and just one of the possible uh, perspectives. And uh, one has to find it for oneself, right? Uh, one has to be a light onto oneself. Um, that's the reason uh, conscious and mindful uh, creativity 
uh, design and innovation um, matter today more than ever. One, when one is creative, one is mindful and uh, focuses on the present, one becomes uh, really meditative. Uh, creativity is like uh, meditation in action, and it is way better than uh, meditation in silence. Uh, most people are uh, immersed in themselves uh, in the name of meditation. But uh, when one is creating, there is something new happening, uh, and something new is being born in the moment of creation. And one and once one gets the knack of uh, staying with that moment, uh, infinite possibilities open up. Uh, so uh, that's a famous quote from uh, J. Krishnamurti, right? Uh, you, are, you are the world and the world is you, uh, the great Indian philosopher and mystic. Uh, so when one understands that what you are creating is also creating you, uh, you real you really evolve and grow in your life, and you feel the uh, infinite universe within you. Or else uh, one goes to work, uh, but uh, you don't. People go to work, but they don't actually grow through work. So, um, so when you embrace creativity, there are uh, no boundaries. Uh, all boundaries uh, disappear. Uh, then uh, there is infinite creativity, right? Uh, I think, uh, personally, I think uh, J. Krishnamurti was one of the most creative person of the last uh, century. So, um, in a sense, uh, be, a, be a designer, right? Be a designer, dreamer, uh, visionary, uh, future-shaping leader. And uh, why? Because... Uh, when you create something, you are very close to the creator, and the creator is in its creation. I don't know if you noticed a flower or a, ro or a rose or a grass. Everything creates, right? We as human beings are the peak of creation, and uh, if we don't know to be creative, then uh, that's a very sad, a very sad state of being. Um, uh, just like the dancer is in the dance and the voice is in the song. Uh, that's the real contribution we as human beings can make uh, by <laughs> by embracing creativity in our day-to-day uh, -day lives. So I want to end today's presentation with a story, uh, the story the speaker heard uh, from his teacher back in art school. Uh, so there was once an artist uh, who used to paint uh, marvelous landscapes and he would uh, sit in a particular spot and watch the mountains and the trees, uh, the, misty, uh, uh, the misty clouds, uh, uh, the clouds passing through dawn and dusk, right? He used to sit with nature. Uh, so uh, while uh, a peasant uh, actually noticed this habit of the artist, and one day he became really curious and came and asked him, sir, what are you looking at all day, uh, every day? And uh, it seems very strange. Uh, for which the artist replied, I'm looking at beauty. Right? And the peasant uh, didn't get it. Uh, he wanted to know like what beauty was. So he asked him, is it in the clouds uh, or is it in the sun or is it in the or is it in the shape of those mountains or trees, or uh, or the rays of the, or the rays of the light peeping, peeping through the barn, or uh, where is it? Right? For which the artist uh, replied, uh, oh, "Beauty is not something uh, you go find. Right? Uh, it's it's an attitude. It's a way of uh, looking. It's a way of observing. Yes, a way of seeing through the heart." Uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Uh, you can substitute uh, beauty with creativity. When uh, when we change, uh, the world changes. And uh, when one realizes that uh, one is part of this infinite creation, then one doesn't look at uh, becoming creative. Then uh, creativity invades you. Uh, I'm reminded of this uh, Chinese proverb, uh, which says, uh, when the eye is unobstructed, uh, sight happens. When the ears are unobstructed, uh, listening happens. Uh, when uh, when the mind is unobstructed, uh, truth happens. And uh, when the heart is unobstructed, uh, creativity and love happens. So uh, I think that's a very uh, 
I think that story captures the essence of what uh, I wanted to say. And uh, actually, in fact, I've actually given the secret of creativity with you. Like if you actually listen to me for the past uh, two hours or so, uh, you should have really got it. And um, unfortunately, not all of us get it the first time, right? Uh, it takes practice and uh, um, that's why uh, uh, that's why we are sharing this knowledge with you. Maybe someday you will get it. Uh, <laughs> So giving it, of course, uh, we gave it to you, uh, but uh, grasping it takes a little time. Um, but I'm sure uh, <laughs> I, I, I personally love this interaction. I think we should do it more often. Uh, and also, thank you. Uh, thank you for being such a nice audience. Uh, this was a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> uh, if, you, if you want to reach me or... Uh, somebody <laughs> associated with me please write to the team at uh, just creativeco.com uh, and please send your feedback to whomever it may concern and uh, some sir or madam uh, might reply whoever that may be and thanks a lot uh, have a great day thank you <laughs>